This may surprise you, but uh, I don't play the violin. We're all buying the same sample libraries. Is it any surprise we end up sounding all the same after a while? You guys, one way to stop recycling old sounds is to make your own contact instruments. So that's exactly what we're gonna do today. We're not gonna be doing round robins. We're not going to be doing multiple sample groups. Quick, dirty, and simple, but highly effective. So using only one audio file that we recorded on this lovely electric violin gifted to me by my dear friend, Matthew Farquharson, let's make a contact instrument. See you at the computer. Okay, you guys, here we are in Logic Pro, and I have pre-recorded a violin sample so you guys didn't have to hear another rendition of the piece I call Killing a Cat. I thought that would be better for everyone. Now, regardless of whatever DAW that you have, uh, you know, whether it's Pro Tools or whether it's Cubase, it doesn't matter. Basically, so long as you have the full version of Contact, you are going to be able to follow along for this tutorial. Again, contact player won't work. You do need the full version of contact essentially to begin creating your own contact instruments. So I've got this pre-recorded violin sample. Let's take a listen to that. Okay, again, nothing extraordinary, but it's doing its job. It is playing a concert C, and it is important that you actually know um, that you actually know which note on uh, concert pitch and on the keyboard is being sounded, because that's going to affect how we map it in our contact instrument. So I'm going to go ahead and bounce this out, and I'm going to bounce it as a PCM or a wave, and remember where you put this stuff, guys. So I'm going to create a unique folder. I'm going to call this folder, let's go electric violin and naming your samples in a way that's logical is going to be really important when you start making more advanced instruments with like multiple velocity layers. But because we're only working with one, we're going to call this violin sample C just so we know what the sample is and we know what concert pitch it is. All right, that went and bounced out. Next, we're gonna go ahead on into contact, and this is where the window is gonna start getting just a little bit cramped, but we'll make do. We are going to navigate to the folder where you saved your violin sample, and literally, guys, it's as simple as this. Just take that file, drag it into contact. Your computer will spend one or two moments pondering the mysteries of the universe, and then this blank contact instrument with the name of the sample that you dragged in will appear. Let's go ahead and open this wrench. This wrench is our way to get under the hood of contact. And again, guys, because this is a simple instrument, we're really only gonna work in a couple of windows here. Let's go ahead and hop to the mapping editor, which is this tab right here in the middle. And you'll see that it automatically maps it to C, but what if we'd recorded a G? You just wanna make sure that essentially your root here is in tune, so to speak, ha, musical pun, with the note you recorded. And let's just take a listen to what we got. Okay, and you'll notice it actually pitch stretches it across the keyboard. So if we play a note other than C, it'll play, it'll pitch stretch it and pull it across. So, so long as your root note is correct with the note that it was recorded at, you can adjust the key range here. But let's just hear what this sounds like if we play around a little bit more. Ah, that's the note we actually recorded, which is why it doesn't sound pitch stretched and weird. And you're gonna see very quickly why recording only one sample is gonna limit you. It's gonna sound a little stretched the higher or the lower you go. Let's take a listen. That's a low C, but that it still sounds pretty cool. And a high C? Yeah, that's <laughs> it sounds like cheesy 90 video game, uh, 90s video game music, but we're working with one sample here, you guys. 
but let's maybe adjust the key range to the sweet spot. So you can adjust it either by dragging these values around or by just dragging this yellow region around. Okay, so our sample is mapped, but let's go to the wave editor and fine tune some of the some of the sample editing here. So you'll see when we open the wave editor, which is again just in this tab up here, you'll see we have our waveform here. And this green bar with the S below it, that is the sample start. So if we move it up a little bit, you'll see the sample actually starts as soon as we hit it now, as soon as we compress a note on our MIDI controller, because we move the sample start time forward a little bit. Whereas before it was over here, there was a bit of a delay. Now there's no delay. So what happens if we're in the wave editor here and I compress a MIDI note? Along and along we go, oh, but I just ran out of bow. I don't have like this indefinite sustain that I may be looking for. So the way around that folks is to set up a sample loop. So if we go just below the wave editor here in this little blue section and I tick this on button here, check it out. We get a looped region that we can set. So let's set our loop start time just a little farther forward by clicking and dragging. And we're gonna set our loop end time maybe somewhere to around here towards the end of the sample. And now you'll hear we get a loop. Ooh, but you'll notice we get a nasty click. So what we're gonna have to do, you guys, is we're gonna have to adjust this X fade value. This is essentially the cross fade. And if we up the cross fade, hopefully we can get a smoother transition into the end of the loop back to the beginning of the loop. Let's see if this helps. All right, it got rid of the click, but it makes for a less graceful loop. And again, the other thing we might wanna do is just try scooting this bad boy around a little bit and see if that doesn't actually get some slightly better results. Because again, you see how the waveform kind of gets thicker as we go along in the sample. Part of the reason the tr uh, transition from the beginning of the loop to the end might not be as graceful is because it's just louder on the second portion here. So let's reduce the crossfade a little bit and we scooted the this, uh, the sam this uh, sample loop region a little farther over so the waveform's a little more uh, even and uniform. Let's see what this sounds like. Hey, that's a little bit better. So unfortunately, I mean, it's functional. I mean, it does exactly kind of what a simple contact instrument should do, but sound wise, it's a little unremarkable. And I think it's gonna benefit a little bit from some additional effects out of our DAW. So let's go have some fun. I am going to add, hmm, which we add. Let's go ahead and compress it a little bit to even out the sound. Okay, that's just boosting the volume. It's really not compressing it much, but all the same, it'll work. And now let's go and do something that's gonna make it sound kind of grimy. I think this could be interesting. Let's just open, let's see here. Ooh, okay. Let's open up a little bit of Decapitator from Sound Toys. I think this could be kind of interesting. Notice how that adds just a little bit of nasty drive. It's pretty simple, but it'll work. And now I think what's really gonna bring this thing to life is if we throw some huge reverb on it. This is an algorithmic reverb that I think will work beautifully. That's kinda nasty. Now, what I would like though, is I'm 
kind of performing on my MIDI controller here, I'm starting to notice that we're kind of lacking a little bit of control. What would be really great is if I could reach off over here, grab my mod wheel, and with my mod wheel, like on other sample libraries, if I could affect the dynamics of this instrument. So let's go ahead and add that final element here so we've got some more control over this instrument. So here I am back in contact. If I navigate to the wrench to open up under the hood of contact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to this little tab here that says mod and click on it. This is going to open up my modulation settings as well as some additional like effects and bus settings. So if I navigate down to this drop down tab here um, that says add modulator and I go to external sources again external sources because it's going to be coming from outside the computer and I hit MIDI CC because I want it to be a CC value coming from my keyboard controller. It'll default to one, and you'll notice when I move my mod wheel, which you can see down on contact here, I should ideally now have control over my volume using MIDI CC1, which is your mod wheel. Let's take a listen. Albeit, it's a little 1980s space movie-ish, but you guys, it's a simple contact instrument, and chances are someone doesn't have a sound that is exactly like it. If you enjoyed this tutorial and you'd like to learn more about contact, what are some things you would be interested in creating? What are some functions and features of contact that we didn't cover in this video, there's a lot of them, that you would be interested in learning? If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell so that you can be notified whenever I release a new video. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and take care.